Hey guys, Blaine here for Bridgeport Games, and it's Pokemon Week, which means all this week we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. That's right. This Saturday coming up, the 27th, is Pokemon Day, and it is not only just any Pokemon Day, it is the 25th anniversary of the Pokemon franchise. So guys, in order to celebrate, we're taking a look today at 25 of my favorite Pokemon, my top 25 Pokemon that I always want to have. I love every single Pokemon on this list, and today we're going to find out why. And guys, if you're just tuning into this episode, make sure you start off with my last episode, 25 Pokemon I Hate, because you will guys see why I hate those Pokemon and why I love these Pokemon. And please remember, no matter what, these are all just my own opinions. So guys, if you have a different opinion than I do about these Pokemon, if you love some of the Pokemon I hate, or if you hate some of the Pokemon I love, that's cool. We're all different. We all have different opinions, and we all like Pokemon differently. That's the great thing about Pokemon is that there are Pokemon for everybody and some people just don't like certain ones and that's okay. So remember guys, this is my opinion and if you guys disagree with me, that's awesome. So guys, without further ado, let's jump in with number 25. Number 25, Buffalon. So guys, Buffalon may seem like an odd choice to some of you guys out there, but there's a lot of reasons why this is one of my favorite Pokemon. First of all, I'm born and raised in Buffalo, New York. I love the fact that Buffalon is a buffalo. And it fits perfectly with the theme of Buffalo. It is strong, powerful, and doesn't give up, just like all the Buffalonians out there. And guys, the fact that it has a big old afro with some big old rings on it, it's perfect. It's a great fit for this Pokemon, and it is just absolutely awesome. I even named one of my draft league teams the Buffalo Buffalons, because I love this Pokemon so much. It's a winner. It's not always the best competitively, but that's okay. I'll take it any day of the week. Number 24, Alolan Muck. So guys, if you were a Gen 1 player like me, you probably remember that Muck didn't get a lot of hype back in the day. It was pretty much just there to minimize, do a little bit of poisoning, but ultimately it's just a big old pile of sludge. So when they decided to give it a regional form in Gen 7, I was a bit skeptical because I thought, what can you do with this? And then I saw it and oh my goodness, they knocked it out of the park. He is so bright and colorful, representing the oil slick, it looks so fantastic, and the fact they gave him poisonous crystals for, like, teeth and claws, oh, it's such a great design for a Pokemon, and looks wonderful. And then, if that wasn't enough, which it already is, by the way, but if it wasn't, they gave it the dark typing. Now, poison is not that great competitively. It has a lot of issues, mainly in that it's weak to psychic, which is a very top-tier typing. Dark type. Fixed. So... They give it dark typing and make it a poison dark mon and give it a bunch of awesome abilities. It gets gluttony and power of alchemy. Very, very cool. And now it's only weak to ground. Awesome, awesome decision on the Pokemon company's behalf. So guys, Alolan Muck, amazing Pokemon. Two thumbs up. Number 23, Copperaja. So guys, the reason I love Copperaja so much is it's an amazing, amazing Pokemon. Game Freak really wanted to touch on the subject of British imperialism, and they really incorporated that into the games very nicely. There's a lot of Pokemon that are very obviously not British-inspired, but they are based on regions that British had conquered or colonized or owned at some point. One of those is India. So guys, in India, British had that as one of its territories for a very long time. And the way they chose to represent that in the game is by making a Pokemon based on an Indian elephant that is made out of copper, a material that's used for tons of things in India. And even its name, Copper Raja. It is copper, obviously, for copper, and Raja for Maharaja, or the ruler of India. It is just an awesome inspired Pokemon. And the fact they managed to combine it with like a composter, with its trunk to make it feel powerful and strong, perfect. This is the absolute definition of a perfect Pokemon based on real-world things that has given a nice Pokemon makeover. Unfortunately, Copperage isn't that great competitively because it's just missing in a couple of different areas, but man oh man, this Pokemon is awesome, and I'm so happy they decided to include it in the Gala region. Number 22, Araquanid. So guys, we have our second Gen 7 mod on this list, and let me tell you, Araquanid is so cool. So we've had Waterbug before, and it's, you know, been hit or miss. But then they made Araquanid. 
This thing is nuts. It looks awesome. It looks like a big old Shelob spider from Lord of the Rings. And then it has this little water bubble on it to allow it to breathe water when it's on land. That's something that's always bugged me about Pokemon, is things like, let's think, any kind of fish. If it's on land, it just kind of floats there, but they need to breathe water, right? So you need to have some way to actually uh, survive on land. Araquanid has got that covered in spades. It brings some water with it, and it happens to just give it a little bit of a water boost too, which makes perfect sense. This Pokemon is strong. This Pokemon looks cool. This Pokemon looks intimidating. Mwah. Perfect. I love Araquanid, and I don't like bug Pokemon that much. Sorry, A-Drive, but this one is 100% a keeper for me. Number 21, Latios. So guys, we finally have a Legendary on this list, and Latios gets a little bit of a handicap in that regard. So Latios, to me, was such a perfect Pokemon for Gen 3. So Gen 3, I loved how they had Ruby and Sapphire, Latios, Latios. They felt like the perfect pair together. I chose Sapphire when I was younger, so Latios was my mom. It really feels like what it's trying to get across. It feels like a plane, but it also feels like a legendary Pokemon, but it also feels like one that's friendly and approachable. Something that's a very good fit for these games. And just the way they tied them into the story and later on in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire made them mons that you can ride around using the flute, perfect. You know, these mons are just awesome in every sense of the word. They look cool, they're strong, and they just have a really good amount of story behind them. So the reason I chose Latios over Latios is that typically I just prefer the color blue over the color red, and I chose Sapphire when I was a kid. But both Pokemon are honestly awesome. But Latios is just my favorite that little bit more. So Latios is a great legendary, and it's a very cool idea of how you can take something simple and make it into a really amazing legendary Pokemon. So Game Freak, two thumbs up for Latios. Number 20, Giratina. So guys, Giratina is really a pretty awesome looking Pokemon. So it's one of the cool things that actually got me back into Pokemon when I took a little bit of a break from it right before college. So once I got into college, we heard that, you know, Diamond and Pearl came out and me and my roommates were out playing. But what really got me to run out and buy it right away, I heard talk that there was a legendary Dragon Ghost Pokemon. And none of my roommates or myself could figure out what that looked like. And we didn't want to go online and look it up. We wanted to go and buy the games and find it for ourselves. And being able to see that and see that awesomeness up front was just an amazing experience. And then we got to follow that up by going into the distortion world. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. And, you know, Giratina is meant to represent the devil effectively. And the way they incorporated the demonic number of 66 into its design aspect without it being overly in your face or overly threatening to parents of kids and things like that was a very well done choice and a very it was a very well done decision by the Pokemon company and it was executed perfectly. This Pokemon looks absolutely gorgeous. Both forms are really really cool and I just love it with all my heart. It's a great legendary and I'm so happy to have it. Number 19, Fennekin. You know, guys, I see a lot of Fennekin hate out there, and I realize it's mainly because of Delphox, but I love Fennekin. I love all of them. I love Fennekin, I love Brakeson, and I love Delphox. I don't get the hate for this. You know, Fire Psychic is a reasonably unique typing. I mean, there's Victini and there's, you know, some others, but basically, it's a pretty nice special typing that you got, especially for a starter. You don't see Psychic starters all that often. And you have Fennekin, which is a really cute little dog with big old ear hair. It looks really, really cute. And then it evolves into Brakeson, which I, you know, I understand some people's issues there, mainly because it can be a little bit of a furry-esque thing. But then it evolves into Delphox. And a lot of people don't like Delphox, but I always thought it was really cool. I liked how we had a Harry Potter wizard fox that had a magic wand and everything to fire its, you know, psychic and fire energies from. It was a really cool look. And, you know, I realize that a lot of people are put off by the big old ear hair. But, like, that's kind of what makes it seem odd and, you know, interesting. So, you look at Haggard from Harry Potter. That dude was a mess. He had hair everywhere. So the fact that Delphox has just got some hair coming out of her ears made sense to me. So, I don't know why everybody out there hates Delphox and why they hate Fennekin. But give me all the Fennekins you got because I'll always find more room for him. Number 18, Kyogre. 
So Kyogre is pretty much here for the same reasons as Latios. So for me, Kyogre is like the perfect representation of the legendary that it's trying to be. It is the perfect box legendary. It looks like a water legendary. It looks like a legendary. If you were to say, the name of this game is Sapphire, make me a legendary that represents Sapphire and tell them nothing else. I think an artist would have a reasonable chance of ending up with something that looks like Kyogre. Kyogre is just such a cool, scary, intimidating mon. The way they incorporated red, like, striping into it looks amazing. And on top of that, it's amazing competitively in VGC. It has been the terror of VGC for as long as I've been playing, and it's not going to change anytime soon. It is an awesome Pokemon. Everything about it is fantastic. And guys, this is the kind of way that you make a legendary. Kyogre, mwah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Number 17, Lugia. Back when I was a kid, I had played Gen 1 more than I could ever tell you. And then Gen 2 came out. And I went ahead and got Silver. When I saw Lugia for the first time in the Pokemon movie, I was blown away that there was this legendary Pokemon that could control Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres and flew with these giant hand wings. It was such an odd design that I had never really seen before that was just so amazingly cool. And then finally getting to catch that thing in Pokemon Silver was awesome too. And you know, ho -Oh is a great mon, but Lugia always has such a special place in my heart for the way it made me feel when I was a kid, seeing this unbelievably new and rare Pokemon for the first time. And you know, in the age of the internet, it's really an experience I don't think I'll ever have again quite in the same way, but man oh man, what a cool Pokemon, and what an awesome feeling for a kid to see that thing in his game and finally add it to his party. Two thumbs up. Number 16, Froakie. So, back to Kalos, guys. Froakie is an awesome, awesome Pokemon. When I first heard they were going to do a frog Pokemon, I was a little skeptical because I didn't really know how it would look. But man, Froakie is adorable. He's got those big old eyes. He's got his little frubbles on his back. He is just such a cute little adorable, adorable Pokemon. And, you know, it goes from this just cute little, cute little frog and becomes this badass you know, Ninja Star throwing Ninja. It is just such an awesome, cool Pokemon. It is a cool concept. And it is a really cool starter for something original and different. I love Froakie. It was my first mod I chose when I entered the Kalos region for the first time. And I was so glad I did because Froakie was awesome. Number 15, Empoleon. So going to Gen 4 for a minute here, guys. Empoleon is my favorite starter out of the three. So... I love that it's a water steel typing that is so unusual and cool to have for a starter. But on top of that, the fact that they incorporated a king to represent Napoleon, so awesome too. The fact that it has a nice little like trident, like face guard crown, just awesome. And the way they evolved an emperor penguin into that concept, perfect. Piplup and Prinplup are such gorgeous Pokemon and awesome in and of their own right. But evolving into Empoleon is just awesome. Perfect. And on top of that, Empoleon fights with its little hand daggers that act as both shields and like stabbing weapons. And if you guys have seen Avengers Infinity War, those are the kind of shields that Captain America was fighting with. I loved Empoleon before I saw that movie, but once I realized he was fighting with Empoleon hands, oh man, I love it even more. So, Empoleon, basically Captain America nowadays, it's staying on my team. Number 14, Litten. So, going back to Alola here, Litten is just an adorable, awesome, cute little fuzzball Pokemon. I love it. I loved it from the first time I saw it because it exactly carries the emotions that cats carry. So, we had had cats before, and you know, Persian and Meowth are awesome, but a lot of times they don't really carry the same sort of sass and indifference that house cats have. If you ever a cat owner out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Litten carries that exactly. It's playful when it wants to be, it's angry and feisty when it wants to be, but also it's lazy and just is a cat that likes chilling out just like a normal house cat. It was such a perfect idea to have for a starter and a great addition to any team. It was an awesome, awesome on to include in the Alola region and just a wonderful decision on Game Freak's part. Two thumbs up. Number 13, Rowlet. So guys, it makes sense that we're going to follow up Litten with Rowlet, my other favorite starter from Alola. So Rowlet is just adorable. He's a cute little pudgy owl and he's got his little leaf bow tie. 
It's such a cool design for a Pokemon. And then it evolves into Dartrix. And then it evolves from there into Decidueye. So guys, it really, I love the aspect that it's a cute little schoolboy who has like an awkward teen phase and then becomes like a badass hero. It literally is the perfect embodiment of the Green Arrow. It starts off as a rich, you know, cute little guy. It, you know, begins to have kind of an awkward phase and then he eventually goes through some stuff and becomes a real kick-butt kind of person on the other side. So, honestly, I like the other two. I love Dark Tricks. I love Decidueye, but Rowlet, he's just so cute. I just want one in real life. I just want to have one I can cuddle with and just hug because it looks like it is the cutest Pokemon ever. So, Rowlet, you're amazing. Don't ever change. Number 12, Whimsicott. So, guys, back in Gen 5, I got a look at Whimsicott for the first time, and I love this thing. It's a cute little guy with a big old puff of cotton for hair. Oh, man. I loved it so, so much. So I had it and I was using it for a long time. It wasn't, you know, competitively good at the time because I wasn't using it right. I was using it as mainly an attacker because at the time I didn't really think about using it for anything else. And I didn't even care that it wasn't doing that great because I loved it so much. And then I started playing VGC and oh man, Whimsicott is the king of the prankster ability. Tailwind, charm, anything you want. And on top of that, it is now a fairy and has Moonblast. Oh, it is perfect. Whimsicott is one of the most adorable Pokemon ever. I absolutely love it and I'm so happy to have it on any team. And on top of that, I get to give him one of my favorite nicknames after the movie Elf, Ninny Muggins, because he is a cotton-headed Ninny Muggins. Whimsicott is an amazing Pokemon. And guys, if you don't like it, I'm sorry, but I have to think you're wrong on this one. Number 11, Tyranitar. So guys, I love Tyranitar so much. He was a mod that when I actually was growing up, I was not that big a fan of him. I thought he looked a little strange, but once I, you know, started looking into the inspirations behind Tyranitar, I love it so much more. So it is based on Godzilla, the king of Kaiju. And guys, Pokemon has so many inspirations in it from Kaiju that it is unbelievable. In fact, the designers, Satoshi Tajiri and the other guys who are working with Game Freak, look to a lot of the movies and media they like to come up with Pokemon. And one of those areas was kaiju movies. And they ultimately wanted to bring the king of kaiju into the game. And they did that with Godzilla in the form of Tyranitar. So a lot of times I've also found out though, for me, aside from the history behind it making it so cool, I've ended up with Tyranitar a ton of times in draft leagues. And I am so happy to have him because he kicks so much butt. He's an awesome Pokemon. He's super strong. He looks awesome. And he was actually the first perfect Pokemon I ever caught in Pokemon Go. So, Tyranitar, I love you, buddy. All right, guys, we're on to the top 10. And we are kicking off number 10 with Colossal. All right, guys, we have our next Gen 8 mod here. And Colossal is a fantastic Pokemon. I can't say enough good things about it. So, guys, you look at Colossal, and you see Roly-Coly and Carcoal. And, you know... I wasn't that big a fan of either of them, but then I saw Colossal. This thing is incredible. It is literally a giant coal furnace, and it looks so cool. And the fact that you can do so many things with it to make its steam engine ability viable, it's just such a cool, flavorful, awesome idea for a Pokemon. And then you Gigantamax it, and that thing looks like a creature out of Shadow of the Colossus, one of my all-time favorite video games ever. So you have this incredibly strong, well-designed, cool Pokemon that also references one of my favorite games of all time. How could I not love this thing? It is amazing. 10 out of 10, awesome Pokemon. Perfect. Number nine, Lapras. All right, guys, we're going to hop over to Gen 1 for a little bit here and talk about Lapras. So Lapras has always been a really good Pokemon to me. And the reason why I love Lapras so much, when I think about going on a Pokemon journey, I think about sitting on the back of a Lapras, traveling across the ocean, looking for new unexplored lands. And I know there's so many Pokemon that can use Surf, but Lapras is the first one that I think about. It's such an iconic and cool Pokemon that has done so perfectly well that you don't need to know that's designed for, like, conveyance. You can just tell with taking one look at them. It's just such a cool, awesome design for a Pokemon that's so perfect and simple and elegant and it's just an awesome addition to any collection and then they went ahead and gave it a gigantamax form and made it amazing so 
Everything about Lapras is amazing, and I'm so happy to have that be a part of the Pokemon world. Number eight, Executor. So guys, I love Executor. I have since Gen 1. It's a goofy little tree Pokemon. I love it so much. Now, I love the Kanto one more than the Alola one, just because that's always been the one I associate it with, and I've always remembered it to be like a psychic Pokemon. I just absolutely love it. It's so goofy, but it's so powerful and has different ways you can use it to make it a real, real threatening Pokemon. And I love the feel of it, that you can just imagine seeing these things in the Pokemon world just waving back and forth looking at you. I love Executor, and I love how it can take a Pokemon that looks goofy and something that looks non-threatening, but in reality it can be very, very, very powerful. And that's something I really like about Pokemon. I'm really big on Pokemon that look unassuming and look cute, but really can pack a real wallop. And for me, that's exactly what Executor is. Number seven, Slowbro. So guys, Slowbro is on this list for pretty much the same reason as Executor. It's an adorably cute Pokemon with just an amazing derpy face that behind the derpy face has these immense psychic powers. I love that it just chills out on the beach and dunks his little tail in the ocean and waits for a shelter to chomp on. It is such a cool Pokemon that I love with all my heart. I've always loved Slowbro. And in Gen 1, it was such a powerhouse because of all the moves it got and all the setup moves it had. Slowbro is always going to be one of my favorites, and they gave it three awesome new forms with Slowpoke, Slowbro, and Slow King in the Gala region. So, Slowbro is my favorite Kanto Slowbro out of all of them, but guys, I love the entire line because they are just an amazing set of Pokemon. Number six, Charmander. You guys had to know it was on the list somewhere, right? <laughs> So, Charmander was my first Pokemon back in Pokemon Red. And because of that, it has to have a special place in my heart. And I know, Charizard is one of the most overused and overhyped Pokemon ever, but it's cool. Charmander, I absolutely love you, bud. And to this day, if I see that episode in the anime where his tail is being protected by a little leaf because his trainer abandoned him, I just want to dive into the screen, give him a big ol' hug, and protect him. Charmander will always have an amazingly special place in my heart because it's the Pokemon that brought me into this amazing Pokemon world. Number five, Alolan Marowak. So guys, back to the regional variants of Gen 7 here. And oh man, this is the one that Pokemon knocked it out of the park more than any other Pokemon in my opinion. So Marowak has always been kind of a so-so Pokemon for me. In Gen 1, it was really important because you used it with the uh, Silph Scope to rescue Cubone's mom back in uh, Lavender Town. But you know... Ultimately, it was kind of a Pokemon that I was very much whatever on. Pure ground typing is fine, but it never really did much for me. And then Gen 7 brought us Alolan Marowak. Oh man, my opinions changed overnight on this Pokemon. When I first saw Cubone evolve into Alolan Marowak on the Pokemon Direct where it was announced, I knew I had to have this thing now. First of all, they made it black and gave it that nice little like scorch mark on its skull and made it ghost and fire typing, which is amazing. But then on top of that, they went ahead and gave it its bone flaming on both sides. So they took Marowak and basically turned it into a fire dancer, but also kind of gave it a Darth Maul sort of feel to him. He is such an incredible Pokemon and they gave him so many amazing moves to make him such a powerhouse. Marowak went from this Pokemon that was ultimately kind of just there to being this thing that stands out as being such just a kick-butt, amazing, amazingly powerful Pokemon that if you underestimate it, you're gonna pay. Alolan Marowak is perfect. It is an amazing, amazing Pokemon. And it is such a good addition to the original forms that uh, Game Freak added in Gen 7. It is just awesome, and I would use it on every single team. Number four, Garchomp. In case you guys haven't figured out by now, my favorite Pokemon type is Dragon Pokemon. And Garchomp is one of the best. Garchomp is just such an amazing Pokemon. You look at it and you just get an idea that it is the powerhouse that it is. Garchomp kicks butt and takes names. It is an incredibly cool looking Pokemon. A land shark that can be dragon and ground typing. And on top of that, it can attack from many different ways because it can be a special attacker, it can be a physical attacker. It's just such an awesomely cool Pokemon. And it's just a perfect addition to any team where you're using a dragon or you need a dragon. Garchomp has been a huge threat in every environment it's ever been a part of, and that's never gonna change because he's such a perfect Pokemon. He is just fierce looking, he's strong looking, 
and just everything done with him showing up at the anime from time to time, it's perfect. Garchomp is so awesome, and when I want to think about a team to use, I am going to be looking at Garchomp a lot of the time. Number three, Mew. All right, so we're down to the last legendary, or mythical in this case, on the list. So Mew has a very special place in my heart for a lot of different reasons. Mew is probably one of the reasons Pokemon became as big as it is in the world. So every kid who played Gen 1 remembers trading on the playground and trading stories of how to get this Pokemon Mew that we know is in the game, but there's no real you know, hard and fast normal playing method to obtain it. You have to use some kind of code or use some kind of glitch in order to enable you to have it. Stories of being able to find Mew in random locations circulated like wildfire through everybody that was playing the games, regardless of age or experience level, whatever. And the drive and desire to find this secret, mysterious Pokemon that was possibly stronger than Mewtwo was something that created this desire and real fire within trainers all over the world. Spoiler, Mew wasn't under the truck, but there were a ton of other ways to get him. And Mew is one of the reasons that so many people love Pokemon even to this day. So aside from the fact that he has such a huge, huge contribution to the game, you can't deny the fact that it's also just an adorable, cute little Pokemon. I remember the first time I was able to find Mew in Pokemon Snap, my heart melted. It's just the cutest little Pokemon ever. And if that wasn't enough, if he wasn't the man that single-handedly made the Pokemon franchise really what it is to many people, it's unbelievably strong on top of that. It can learn every move tutor, every TM. You can run 50 different move combinations on this thing and never use the same one twice. Mew is just an awesome Pokemon. It's adorable, it's tough, and has a huge, huge story and has huge significance to the Pokemon world. It deserves to be a top three Pokemon. Number two, Mimikyu. In case you guys didn't know, Gen 7 actually brought a lot of mods that I really, really love into the Pokemon franchise, and one of them was Mimikyu. So, I'm actually not that big on Pikachu clones 9 times out of 10, but Mimikyu... <sighs> Mimikyu has such a special place in my heart. So, Mimikyu... At first we saw it, we thought it was just a Pikachu clone, whatever. But what it is, it's a Pokemon that is so frightening and scary to people that it makes itself look like Pikachu, the most, you know, charming and well-known Pokemon, so people will just love it and people will want to be friends with it. And I think everybody can relate to feeling like they want to make themselves a little bit better to appeal to people sometimes, and Mimikyu embodies that in so many ways. It's just such a cute, adorable idea for a Pokemon. And even though the Pikachu that you see isn't Mimikyu, you can sort of get an idea for the personality underneath the costume just because of what you know about how it acts and how it behaves. And it's just such a cool and clever, interesting concept for Pokemon that I absolutely love. And then again, on top of that, it's completely overwhelmingly powerful. First of all, it has three immunities. It's immune to normal, fighting, and dragon. And on top of that, it has a built-in focus sash in the form of disguise. It's an awesome, awesome Pokemon. There's a million ways to run it, and guys, it has a very, very unique, awesome typing. So guys, Mimikyu is just fantastic. It's a wonderful Pokemon. Please add one to your collection if you haven't yet. And guys, we're going on to number one. Number one is Dragonite. So Dragonite has been my favorite Pokemon since Gen 1. And in case you guys couldn't tell, I have a Dragonite on my shirt. So... The reason Dragonite has been my favorite is because there was only one Dragon Pokemon family, Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite. And I remember finally seeing a Dratini and being able to train it up and get this super high level Dragonite. And that felt like such a huge, powerful accomplishment that it was just something that was so rewarding in Gen 1. I loved Dragonite before Pokemon had natures, before Pokemon had abilities. It was the one Pokemon I always wanted to have on my team, no matter what. And it was one of the first Pokemon that I traded over to Pokemon Gold and Silver from Gen 1 because I wanted to have my Dragonite with me. Dragonite has always been the epitome of power and coolness in the Pokemon franchise to me. And then you guys see Lance using his Dragonites, he kicks butt and takes names. And if you guys look into the Pokemon Generations anime, Lance uses his Dragonites to break into a big old building and take down anything that comes across them. 
Dragonite is just such an awesomely cool Pokemon. And the fact that it's goofy and silly looking makes me love it even more. It's a Pokemon that just looks silly and can have a good time and be fun, but at the same time, it can, you know, put on its game face and really get in there and start brawling. It's just an awesome Pokemon. And then as Natures and Abilities came around, it got things like Dragon Dance and it got things like Multiscale for its ability. It's just awesome. Dragonite is such a cool Pokemon and it's a Pokemon that really occasionally doesn't always see play in different metagames, but it's a Pokemon that I always want to try to use because I love it with all my heart. Dragonite is a fantastic Pokemon and is easily the best pseudo-legendary for me. So guys, that has been my list of the 25 Pokemon I absolutely love more than anything else. Please remember to like this video if you like this kind of content and please subscribe to the channel because it really helps the channel more than you can ever know. And if you guys really, really like this kind of content, please hit the notification bell so you guys never miss an episode. That's all I got for you guys and we will see you guys in the next episode. Bye! Bye.